so much, Paul Slade Smith, for uh, joining me today for a conversation uh, about unnecessary farce and about his career and uh, whatever else we might uh, delve into in our conversation here. Uh, before I get going, I should just, for people that aren't aware, uh, you're the gentleman that wrote the play, Unnecessary Farce, currently showing at Stage West Calgary with an amazing group of uh, actors uh, that are just doing a wonderful job with it. That's, that's what I hear. However, let's go a little further back. Uh, yeah. Let's go back into uh, a little quote from the Dramatist magazine in 2007, where you were named as one of the 50 to watch, writers of exceptional merit and promise. Uh, yes, which was lo lovely to get. Uh, <laughs> that, that was just as, I guess, probably a little less than uh, a year after Unnecessary Farce debuted. Um, and uh, on the recommendation of a, of a friend of mine who's a playwright, Tom Dudzik, I don't know if you know the name Tom no. Dudzik, uh, Over the Tavern is his biggest hit, uh, but he's had quite a few hits here uh, in the States anyway. And, uh, and I know a lot of uh, productions in Canada as well. But... Uh, Yes, the, the magazine contacted me and gave me that honor, which was lovely. And I know that even from the, the start of it, uh, the play was gaining uh, recognition and award nominations right out of the gate. Uh, in October 2006, it was uh, indicated that by 2013, you would have seen over 100 productions already. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't have dreamed, really, <laughs> that, that it would uh, that it did this well. You know, when I, when I set out to write the play, you know... You know, the great percentage of my career, I'm an actor, <clears throat> and uh, and I just had a notion to set out to write a play, and with, really with the thought that, let's see if I can write a play. You know, let's see if I start on page one, if I can reach the end of act one, and then if I, <clears throat> you know, and see where it goes from there, and uh, and gathered friends together to do readings as I was writing it, and people were very encouraging, but... But every step of the way was a, just sort of a let's see, you know. And then once it was it was done, I thought, <clears throat> and I felt like, yes, this is producible. Then it was like, let's see if I can get a production. And I sent it out to people I knew, you know, for, as an actor, uh, directors and producers. And uh, a friend of mine, Christine Thatcher, who ran a theater in Michigan at the time, uh, responded and said, yes, I want to put this in my season. And, and that was... You know, to me, that was like as good as it could get, you know, <laughs> that Christine was going to do it and because uh, she's a great director and she's a playwright as well. And so she, you know, during those rehearsal processes had uh, all kinds of great thoughts about, you know, about the structure of the play and edits I could make and really good questions about why did this happen and made me think a lot about what the, you know, the play was saying and what was happening and. And then it was, well, let's open it up and see, you know, that very first day, you know, who knew what, how the audience would react. And I don't think any of us connected with that production will forget the first audience. And this, it, our stage manager, you know, naturally, as you're, as you're doing your final runs, they're recording the time to see, you know, to see how long the thing takes, how long is Act 1, how long is Act 2. Are we, you know, the, the director saying we need to keep up the pace, you know, so our, you know, how's the shape going? Well, from the last final run through without an audience to the first time we had an audience, 14 minutes were added to the show. Oh, my. Which is basically 14 minutes of laughs is how I looked at it. And, I mean, you know, with, even without that statistic, just to be in the audience that night was <laughs> unbelievable, you know. And so from, from that time on... I knew that the play was, you know, was something special. But even then, you know, then how do you get a second production? And then how do you get a third? And to think that we would have passed 100 now is unbelievable. It's no surprise, having seen it and having had an opportunity to review it myself, the uh, the audience reaction. It was just, you're, you're sort of watching. And uh, for myself, I base a lot of my reviews on how the rest of the audience responds. And it was right. just progressively everybody got all the jokes and and it's funny like I, I i often wonder uh farce is something that sort of it just sounds old how are younger audiences taking to it right. but my gosh uh, the younger people were were howling along with uh, all of us old timers <laughs> that's great yeah that's great 
So how do you walk into writing a, a production like that that's uh, that is a traditional farce in every sense of the of the term but there's there's some you've got some great like I haven't read the script but I'd love to see your your uh, your dialogue for when when your Highland Hitman goes uh, a little off course there with his language which <laughs> yeah that is that is all scripted and I actually I think I read in in either your review or one of your comments or I read somewhere that somebody said now that, that actor must just be making that up. <laughs> uh, but no, that is, yeah, that for those people who don't know, there's a character uh, who is Scottish and uh, who is, uh, he's a hitman. So it is, is, he has a generally mean dis demeanor. But when he gets angry, his Scottish accent gets thicker and thicker and thicker until the point where he can speak for a whole page and no one on stage understands what he's saying. And no one in the audience understands what he's saying. Um, and yeah, that is all in fact scripted and, and scripted, uh, with an intention of, you know, just trying to put as many consonants in there as possible. <laughs> uh, and an interesting challenge that, that I, I was only involved in the first production and the second production it happened, you know, got to be there for rehearsals and worked with the actors, both productions, great actor, very smart actor playing Todd, obviously a very funny actor, but both of them had the exact same problem. Uh, uh, which then, when I had to play published, I made sure to make a note in there to to to, to advise future Todds, <laughs> which was that they had a difficulty making it as intelligible as 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 I intended, because just as an actor, your whole life is about making clear what you're saying. So they would be speaking language that was completely impenetrable, but with their actions, and you totally knew what they were saying. <laughs> And so, our, you know, Christine, our first director, had to keep saying to David, no, I can still understand you. He was like, how can that be? And we're like, well, we all understand what you're saying. So it's it's really a challenge for the actor as well to make it completely, you know, and to all the time be so passionate, you know, about what he's saying. And he's so serious and it means a lot to him, <laughs> but no one has any idea what he's saying. Um, yeah, that was just a lot of fun to write. It's just one of the highlights, and it's it works so well. I, I it, these are a challenge to review because you don't want to give away any of the surprises, and uh, it's unfair to anybody that does. I don't think they're they're doing it justice because to walk in and be unexpected and see some of the scenes that follow along with that, it's just I terrific. I appreciate that, Dan, because that's actually <laughs> that's how for me writing a play. Like ideally, the, an audience member knows nothing about it. That's how I think about. You know, I I want this. I want the obligation of filling them in to come entirely from the script. You know, that you you literally a curtain can can come up and then a person walks on stage. You don't know who they are. You don't know who anybody is, and you don't know where it's going. And the play tells you. You know, the play fills you in as you go. So you, it's over 100 productions now. I guess maybe early on you got to see a few of these productions aside from the two, or is it a challenge when it grows to 100? Uh, well, you know, the, concurrent with, you know, this play, you know, blowing up and being done everywhere, I actually was as busy as I've ever been as an actor. I, um, when I, the most, uh, the majority of my writing of Unnecessary Forest, I was touring with the production of Phantom of the Opera, the, the national tour that sometimes gets up to Canada. I don't, I don't think we've ever been to Western Canada. When I was there, I think we were in, we played Toronto. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, you know, then you're working 52 weeks a year. And so, like, occasionally I get tantalizingly close to where the production <laughs> was, but I'd have the same show schedule as the, the show would. And then, and then I jumped right from the Phantom Tour to the Wicked Tour. And, and so I, uh, uh, until a couple of years ago, I was, you know, I was pretty much working all the time. But I, uh, but I tend to think, and I, I, I've toyed with the idea of coming up to see, uh, uh, the stage based production, but um, uh, but I tend to think it, it you know, it, I, I, I've been, I'm, I'm comfortable now with the notion that it lives on its own, <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, because I like to think of it, I mean, it, it flatters me to think of it to be like a script that I get as an actor, where you know, where you don't usually have the play right there, yeah, and you just Everybody just sits around the table, and all they have is this script, and they have to look at it, and figure out from there, you know, what to do. And, um, yeah, but I love hearing. I mean, I love seeing photos of the shows. I love hearing reviews. I love 
you know. What's really fun at Stage West is, for some reason, uh, how many of the actors are on Twitter. And yeah. I, you know, I've been able to follow. It's just fun if a friend of theirs comes or somebody knows and they post something and I get to read. You know, it sounds like they're all having a really fun time. Well, it's not just uh, the, the, the people here that have found it to be enjoyable. I mean, you've won awards uh, in Michigan, Texas, San Antonio, uh, Denver. So th this thing is kind of catching on with audiences, to yeah. say the least. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's um, yeah, it's it's a thrill. It's a thrill, and uh, uh, and it's fun to hear the reports from all over. You know, it's fun. It's fun to see it have a success because you know, I and I, I wrote this. In, uh, I told this to to that original group in Michigan. Um, uh, you know, I, I've done a lot of farces as an actor. I've done a lot of comedy. I've done a lot of farces, and and I I think you know, I, I think it's safe to say that there's for me there's nothing more thrilling than when you're doing a really good car, uh, comedy, a really good farce, and you're in those moments where it's really working, and and you're taking that ride, and the audience is taking that ride, and it's it's just such a thrill. So I really wrote it. You know, I wrote these seven characters as, you know, hoping that other actors would get, you know, would have the same experience I've had. You know, so that's why. That, so it's great for me, first, my plays being done, but to think that other actors just like me are having fun, you know, in Calgary and fun everywhere is that's was the whole idea. You know, and that audiences too. You know, the audiences get to enjoy it. Um, we also uh, have mentioned uh, you've you've brought up uh, throughout the course of our conversation here that you've. You've been in some pretty incredible company as an actor as well, uh, yeah. touring production and on Broadway with uh, Phantom and Wicked, uh, in addition to all of your other credits there that we've got. Um, does this uh, balance out a little bit of uh, trying to juggle out being an actor and a, a playwright? Uh, I, it, you know, it, it, I'm finding a balance in it. You know, it's. Um, uh, I think that maybe... I think, like, ultimately I am a writer. Like, I think that's probably m my chief passion. But, but, uh, but, um, I guess, you know, I, I guess maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't pigeon my whole myself. I, I guess I'm just a theater person, you know. Yeah. I, I love, and, and I, what, I, what I realized once I started writing was that it's sort of, I did a whole flashback to my career as an actor and when I would get a job versus when I would not get a job. And I think that I realized, oh, I think a lot of times I audition as an actor, but who has a playwright's brain, you know what I mean? So I've done a lot of new work. I've, I've been cast in a lot of new shows. And I think that comes from reading a script from a playwright's perspective, you know what I mean? As opposed yeah. to from an actor's perspective, which is a little different. So that I'm not thinking like, what is this character actor, but rather what is this writer's structure of the scene? What is he trying to say with this character, you know? And so I think really I've had a playwright's brain the whole time, you know? And uh, and, it, and now it lets me enjoy, you know, now it lets me enjoy writing, the writing of the play I'm doing from a different perspective, you know? So when we were corresponding earlier, uh, you mentioned that you're heading off uh, this weekend uh, to New York for a workshop. Is there any chance that this is for your next play? No, it's it's something I it's again it's again it's an acting job, which is fantastic. It's um it's a workshop, a three week workshop of a new musical of Finding Neverland. Oh Johnny Johnny Depp Kate Winslet movie. And uh Harvey Weinstein, the, the producer of the original film, is producing this musical. And it's uh I'm quite I'm thrilled about it. It's uh it's uh, it sounds like a very exciting prospect. I think they have you know great dreams about it for, for it in the future, but but right now we're spending three weeks working on what I gather is a pretty new draft of the script and you know new. I think we're, it gives them three weeks. Not you know at the end of three weeks, no, the public will never see it. You know, it's just for the creators and it's for the producers, and they get a chance to look at it and see you know what shape it's in. I imagine with this kind of thing, within the three weeks, they'll be able to do rewrites, you know, if they see this needs to change or that needs to change. And so it's really fun. Again, you know, I, I like I say, my, a lot of my career as an actor has been involved, being involved in new things, which is, which is, 
you know, thrilling, you know, it's it to, to, to be there while the people are creating, you know, um, and to help, you know, to be a part of making something come to life. And it's a, that's a beautiful movie. Oh yeah. I love, I love the story for people who aren't familiar. It's, it's about the writing of Peter Pan, basically J.M. Barry, what, you know, he, uh, the people he meets in his real life and how that affects him coming up with this new story. And, um, I'll be playing uh, one of the actors who's in the company of the people, you know, of uh, uh, the company of actors who do Peter Pan for the first time. And the fun of it seems to be, fr from their perspective, that it's just, you know, they're used to doing something much more highbrow. And they, well, what is this, you know, uh, you know, um, playing children and boys and <laughs> Indians and, and dogs, you know. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, that sounds like a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's thrilling. Well, now I know you've got. Uh, I, I noticed online you've got uh, your next play is called A Real Lulu. It sounds like it might be back in the waters of the farce. <laughs> it, 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 I've tried to come up with as farcical a title as possible, <laughs> uh, but I think it's actually not. Uh, as I write it, uh, and I, I have uh, I, uh, not too long ago finished the first draft. Um, uh, and I have a good idea now what needs to happen, you know, for a second draft. But it's uh, it's less farcical. It's a comedy. Yeah. But uh, I don't think any maybe once when someone slams a door. But <laughs> but it's it's uh, more a comedy than a farce. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. But I I, I uh, I'm really fond of it. Uh, and it's it's about it's about uh, politics sort of a, a comedic look at how we get politics so wrong, basically, you know, <laughs> um, which is, which is obviously a subject right for <laughs> comedy. Excellent. Well, I, I know you've got stuff to do and to prepare to get away. So thank you so much for taking time. And, uh, I'm crossing my fingers. This is my first ever <laughs> Skype uh, recording. So we'll see yeah. how it works out. I look forward yeah. to having you be able to view it. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.